Sadiq? Yeah, we're uh, cutting a static. So we have analog pins on the uh, bottom left, power pins. A very simple thing that we're gonna do now is to take an LED, all right? Look for an LED. Right? We try to power this with 3.3 and ground. So basically what we're trying to do is to give in uh, power to the cathode and anode. If you try to connect directly, it should be working. Making sure that we start a simulation. Let me just check quickly. Yeah, all right. You see it working, right? So a few things before, oh yeah. Uh, this, just to make sure that I'm not very quick. We have the start simulation button where whatever you code in or whatever you are trying to uh, make the circuit, you can click on the start simulation to see how it works, all right? So this is where you click in. If you want to code, you can actually code it on blocks. We do have uh, C code and yeah, the text is basically C code. So uh, since you guys, okay, since you guys are, uh, maybe we can talk about it, ask y'all which one you, you guys would prefer, whether it's blocks or text, and then we can take it from there. So uh, for the first part, for the very first part, what I wanted to do is to get the LED from the screen, all right? And if you look at LED, we have two legs, right? Uh, two, two terminals, one is A0 and one is K0. Connect the A0 to 3.3, and connect the k-tot to ground. This 3.3 and ground, if my screen is not too clear, yeah. And then you click on start simulation. As soon as you click on the start simulation, you should be able to see the light coming up. So I'll just wait here. Oh yeah, uh, Jacobi, thank you for covering up. This is where we make circuits, right? There's a platform that we make circuits. You can do any circuit that you want. Uh, and this is where we kind of make prototypes uh, for triple E students, for mechanical students. If you were to do any uh, electronics project, I'm very sure that you'll come across of this components that we're going to use today. So this is how we're going to take the, the session today. I'll be teaching basic electronics, LED, the power buttons and stuff. And then I'll show you guys how to power up a basic uh, motor. And then we'll try to code. Uh, and we'll see how a code works for a car, for a four wheel drive, right? Okay, so if we were to uh, power on the LED, it says current to LED is 206, while absolute maximum is 20, which means you are providing too much of current to the LED, right? And what do we do for this? How do we... Oh, there is no difference between these two terminals. There are two ground terminals, there is no difference at all. And how do we uh, reduce the uh, current going through the LED? Yeah. So we're right. using the input voltage. Yeah, we can also use the input voltage and there's another way that we can use is simply to connect a resistor. All right, so I'm just going to delete this. All right, delete, delete this uh, wires that are connected. First thing, A0 to terminal two. Terminal one to 3.3 volt. Maybe I can have it like this, It'll be easier to see. And then ground all the way to the top. All right, ground to the top. And if you were to click on start simulation, you should be able to see the light lighting up, but then right now it's not too much of current going to the LED, right? So this is a very basic example on how we can easily light up uh, LED using the power uh, power blocks. Uh, now the next question you might you may have: Why is it two beam? Right? What can we do for that? Any suggestions in the chat box? Can you repeat the question, please. Now we have the light uh, and it's very dim, right? So what can we do to make it brighter? So we can reduce the resistance to increase the current. Yeah, there's another way just to simply. Connected to five volts. Five volts. Correct. So we just simply connect this to five volts. That would also work, right? And if you want to click on start simulation, it works. So what we're going to do is to uh, stop this part here, right? And may I know how many of you managed to do this, the first part? 
lighting up an LED using the power buttons here, the, the power pots here. If yes, say yes in the chat box, let me see how many of you managed to do. Okay, those who are saying no, if you guys can put up a, a message on the chat box on why you're not able to, then it will be easier for us to move uh, forward. Uh, whether we run too fast, whether you guys are able to follow and stuff. All good for now. Are you guys able to follow? Yes, no? Too fast. Okay. Okay, so yeah. The last one would be this connection, five wood to ground. Not necessarily we must have the uh, USB coming in all weeks, all right? You can actually have a battery, nine volt battery going into the V in, right? So V in means voltage in, uh, voltage in. So this is where you can connect the battery plus and then the battery negative goes into the ground point and then you will see the light with, uh, lighting up. All right, can we go to the next part? Yes, no? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. So for the next part, what we're gonna do is, what we're gonna do is to connect the LED to a digital pin and we are going to make a very simple code, right? So let me take you uh, slowly here, one by one. First thing first, instead of doing it like this, what we're going to do is to get a breadboard to see how the circuit actually works nicely, all right? So everybody, uh, everyone, if, if you guys can get quickly grab a breadboard, then that would be great. Now, just a very uh, brief introduction about the uh, breadboard. If you were to hover your mouse, you should be able to see how uh, it's connected. So we have a long metal stripe going from the, this, uh, this point here and until here. So this is actually connected horizontally. And also for the minus, it's connected horizontally. But for all these points that we have on top, these points are connected vertically. If you hover, you should be able to see. So these points, now if, you are, if, if I were to give in a five volt here, right? If I were to give in a five volt, I should be able to get another five volt here. That's how it's connected. It's all connected. So if you want to make any parallel connection, then that's how you do it. And if you want to make any series connection, you have to connect from one uh, for like, let's say if you're connecting, if you're connecting an LED to point pin six, the other pin should be going to pin seven, this, this part over here. Okay, so how do we do that? The first thing, again, you get a uh, LED, put it on the red bar, right? We have anode and we have cathode. A naught is a plus pin, right? So we'll get the register. Going to the minus pin right now. I mean, for this sign, we'll see if I can rotate this. I should be able to, uh, but just quickly to check. Okay. The, let's see. Yeah, we can rotate this, right? It's good to rotate to see how it's going to work, right? And then, this pin, right? The last pin is going to go to ground GND. And this GND and the other GND is the same pin, right? No difference at all. So we connect it this way. This pin should be going to plus, right? So we are going to connect to pin eight, right? Now I'm going to change that color to white, this color to black, just to show you. So how did you rotate the resistor? Okay, so you click on the component, click on this button here on top, rotate. So we can also rotate by using R. Yeah, you can just press R as you saw that. Right, so we have pin eight going to the plus pin here, the A0 pin, the negative going to resistor, and then it's coming down to ground. And if I were to click start simulation, I shouldn't be seeing anything. All right, nothing should be working. And the reason nothing is working is because we haven't coded yet. That's a good question that we have. Why did we connect to uh, uh, pin eight? We can connect to anything you want. 
All right, for this part of the project, we can connect to any pin you want, but just to make it uh, simple and uniform so that everybody will be able to follow, uh, we are connecting it to pin eight. Okay, now um, I want everybody to go to the code and under the code, look for text, T-E-X-T. -E. Right? So using blocks wouldn't be that challenging. Now, uh, let me just ask in the group, do you want do you want to use block or do you want to use code? Shall we shall we go for a challenging method or shall we just work on an easy way? Okay, so we'll kind of work on the text. Okay, so everybody is saying text, then we'll take it up. Just click on text, and this is what you should be seeing. Right? So this uses a C code. The, the main two things that we always remember and when it comes to uh, Arduino coding is basically void setup and void loop. All right. Uh, don't, don't type yet now. I'll just. How did you get the code? Okay. So over here, you just click on code on top. Under here, you click on text. It should be on blocks by default. You have to change the text. Okay. A good question here, uh, can we use Java code? Uh, as of now, no. Even Arduino, you know, Arduino ID itself, it uses C, C++ language. Sir? Yeah. So in the, in the bread box combination, the LED and the resistor, uh, what sort of combination are they in? Are they in series or are they in parallel here? Oh, this is completely on a series form. So from pin eight, the power is going directly to the A0. From pick out, it's coming up, going to the resistor, coming down. That's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Welcome. So why is that circuit not working yet? What is the pro issue as of now? Because there is no power pin coming up. There's no power signal from pin eight. They're not providing anything. So that's why we're going to code now to see how it's going to provide the power. So, so we're going to code the power input. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So two things that you always need to remember, white setup and white loop. Now, white setup is for you to set up all the pins. You must tell the Arduino that this is my input, this is my output, all right? This is my sensor, this is my LED and stuff. For white loop, uh, you have to code it on how you want it to work. If let's say, for example, you want the LED to turn on for five minutes, turn off for another two minutes, turn on for five minutes, then you will code it under loop, all right? For the first part, you have to do it under setup. That's where you set up the pin. Now, let's quickly start. INT, INT stands for integer. All right, the first line, INT, LED, right? Now this is a rate LED, so I'll put rate LED. INT rate LED. This name, feel free to name any, anything. You can use your own name also, that would be fun as well. So integer rate LED equals to eight. All right, why eight? Because it's connected to pin eight. If you're connecting to pin nine, pin 10, pin 11, just change it to that pin, it, it will work. All right, and do not forget that you must have a semicolon at the back. Integer LED late, uh, sorry, L rate LED equals to eight and then semicolon. Yeah, most probably I'll be sharing this recording. All right, then the next line would be void setup. And then after the white setup, we will have open bracket, close bracket, right? Open bracket, close bracket. And then we will have uh, curly bracket coming up here. Okay. After the curly bracket, we have to De de declare the pin, all right? See uh, whether it's an output pin or an input pin. So pin mode, P-I-N, capital M-D-O-E, pin mode, rate LED is a output because you want the power to go out, right? That's an easier way to think of it. You want the power to be, the, the signal to be going out to power up the LED. Now, for example, if you were to put the- user? Yeah. So this pin mode red LED output, what is it? Means yeah. means that you want to provide the uh, current outside from the Arduino board. Let's say if you put input. Now when do you input. put 
when you have uh, this statement says to the pc or the stimulator again what is it means this what this statement conveys the message to the computer yeah basically to the microcontroller excuse me sir yeah so couldn't we have used to see out red led i was just wondering because we also use c out in c++ language uh, we are using output i understand but won't c out be also valid okay for c out if i'm not wrong it's for printing commands but uh, over here it is actually printing i mean they are actually sending the signal yes yes yeah so it's a good question uh, yeah for for c out yeah. for example yeah. here you said that int red led so you define an integer red led means you define a variable red led correct yes but uh, in the statement pin mode red led output means what are you saying to the computer what should it do we are telling that we are we are supposed to provide the power to the uh, we call the led now if you are using sensor sensor you get the data you have to pass it to the arduino board right the power is actually coming from the sensor the signal is coming from the sensor and then you will put input okay sir yeah if the signal is coming in you put input if the signal is coming you if you want the signal to be out then you put output very simple uh, so just final question just to clarify about the c out state uh, c out question i asked earlier uh, mm -hmm. it, it it was uh, uh, it is uh, just to uh, enter our uh, statements and messages we cannot uh, use uh, the uh, red light or pin mode or uh, uh, signal commands uh, to uh, send to the computer right so yeah, it wouldn't work okay okay sir yeah so, so one question yeah yes so what is the what is the input and output the, what is coming okay i will keep it very simple here if you want sensors giving information to the arduino board you use input if you want the Arduino to power out, you use output. That's it. So what type of information it is giving? Any sensors will use input. Any kind of uh, thing. Let's say if you want to power up a buzzer, LED, you are giving power from the Arduino board, right? Okay. Yes. So, yeah. When, when you're giving out powers, then it will be declared as output. When you want the signals to be coming in, then you put input. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So since we have it as a digital pin, now two things: when you read, you take in information; when you write, you write what you know. Correct. Right. So we want to write it now. What are we writing? Digital pin. We are writing it to be high. Right. We want to write it as high. Why do you want to write it as high so that the uh, the, the the Arduino board will be giving a signal called one, like you'll be sending out one uh, PWM one. All right. If it's it's either one or zero. If you send one, it will light up. If you send zero, it will turn off. Why write? Because we are sending the we are sending the data out. If it's let's say if it's an input here, for example, then this one will be a read digital read. You guys get the combination? Yes, no? Is it too hard? Could you explain the read part again? What you were saying about replacing okay. the If this part is input, if you are connecting a sensor and if you declare it as an input, then this one should be a read because basically you are taking the information in. Okay, so big and it's output, so we write. Exactly. You know, so I think it should be the early braces. Again? Sorry? Should be in the curly braces or it should be outside the means void loop curly braces or means this is a statement, no digital right uh, red LED high. Uh -huh. So there should be curly braces, curly curly brackets. Yes, yes, correct. Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding. So we should have the curly bracket coming in, a digital right LED rate high. And then the next thing is to put a delay block there. I mean, delay uh, uh, word there. The delay basically says how long it should stay, how long the power stays in. And then again, what about, okay, I'm going to write this code and I'm going to ask you guys to kind of guess what's going to happen with the LED. All right. So can you all tell me in the chat box what will the LED do or what will happen to the LED if I were to start simulating? Sir, it will blink for one second and then it will not blink for one second and so and so forth right 
So what we're trying to say, turn on for one second, turn off for one second. Since it's on loop, it's going to repeat, repeat, repeat. One second, one second, on one second, off one second, and you will see it blinking. Right? So, so but just because we wrote loop, it's like inside a while loop. You can think of it as inside something, exactly. a while loop. Exactly. Uh, so, so this is something special for Arduino only, right? Yeah. The C++ yeah. used in Arduino. Okay. Okay, there's a question uh, while writing the white loop. Okay, so if this function here will definitely come in every loop, I mean, in every program. Let's say if you don't want anything, only once, if, if you want the LED to light up only once, then you kind of delete the whole thing, all right? You put it under the uh, white setup. It will still work. If you want it to work only once, it's also possible, all right? But let's say if you want it to be consistent, uh, we want to run it for multiple times, then it will come under the white loop. Again, for loop is also possible, but even if you were to for, put a for loop, it will be under here, like how you put in Python while, and then you put a for loop inside, all right? So if I were to start simulating. So if we not use loop and use for loop inside void setup, then it will also work in that way. Yeah, it will also work. So yeah, as I said, the number of times if you want to run it, then you can put white loop and then you put uh, a few command there, like uh, for this many times you want it to be, you want the program to run. But right now we are using a, a while loop. This is a while loop and you see it working. All right, look at the LED. The LED is actually blinking, All right? So that's a very simple program. And if you guys are able to do this, you actually, able to uh, what we call code. Okay, high means basically it's sending out one, low means it's basically sending out zero. So digital tokens can only send out zero or one. One means high, zero means low, which means one means on, zero means off. So, so instead of high, we could have just uh, written one. Uh, let me see, it should work, but let me just quickly check. Excuse me. Oh, I need to stop the simulation first and then one and zero. Let's see if that works. That's a good question also. Yeah, it works. One zero also works. Yeah, blocks will definitely be easier, but uh, let's take up something challenging, right? So, yeah. So just to confirm, can we use, uh, can we run the functions without using the main function? Uh, you mean these two functions, is it, or without the pin? Yes, yes, because okay. uh, you wouldn't be able to. For example, let's say we close this, right? If I were to start, it will not start. It will not work. Yes, okay, sir. in this case, it is working, but most of the cases, it wouldn't work because you will not know. If you have multiple, uh, multiple pins coming in, then it will not work. All right, mm -hmm. so it's always good to declare the pin as uh, output or input. It's always good, All right? Maybe we can see a few more examples right after this, right after this project, where we will see multiple uh, uh, components coming in and then one will work, one will not work and stuff. Yeah, all right. So shall we go to the next part of the project? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. And if you want so to please do... wait a minute. Uh, actually, I was uh, coding the thing. So please, right. if you can. Sir, uh, if we are using digital read instead of digital write and set it to input, what will it read? Like what will the uh, device that we've set up read? Okay. Uh, like, let's say for, uh, for example, sensor, for example, ultrasonic sensor, where you get the uh, readings coming in your figure and then you get the echo pin coming in, right? So that's why you use digital read. Okay, so and these inputs that we're giving in that exa in the for example the ultrasonic sensor, those inputs are coming will be from another device in the same circuit that we make, or will it can it or can we give the inputs through a microphone or something like that? Very question. So, but all the sensors right will definitely have four pins. So like for example, uh, more than two pins. 
definitely more than two pins. It could be three or it could be four. The first two will be the power pins where you have to put it to five volt and ground. Then the other two will be the signal pin. So it will be powered by the Arduino board itself. And then it will be, uh, it will be powered by the Arduino board and then the signal will be coming in from the digital pin. Okay, 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 got it. Uh, I have a question like, uh, which, like, what is the voltage of this? Like, we haven't specified any voltage, right? Like, but we saw that. So, which, what is, what would be the voltage that we are putting? Okay. In? For, uh, for this Arduino board, uh, ideally, it, it gives out a five volt uh, output. But again, that being said, it might not be exactly 5.0 volt. It can be, you know, a bit off, depending on, uh, yeah, it could it, it, it really very varies, but ideally five five volt, theoretically five. But if you were to measure, it wouldn't be five most of the time. Okay, right. Thank you. So and in the breadboard, uh, there are wires running inside, like uh, like I don't fully understand the setup of the breadboard. How is everything connected? The resistor to the LED and everything. So back of the breadboard. So all the uh, things are actually connected this way. This is what you should be able to see inside. Focus is so like every hole is connected to each other. Right. Okay. So if you were to make a parallel circuit while waiting for some of y'all to code, right? Can someone quickly make uh, what we call uh, a parallel circuit and send it to the grid? All right, you can tap the power from here. Yeah, good question here. So, Sona and all, yes. If you want the readings, if you want the uh, sensor reading to be from zero to 1023, then you connect from A0 to A5, you use the analog pins. If you don't want that, if let's say, for example, you want the IR pins coming in, uh, whether white line, white line or black line, uh, whether if it's a line following a robot, then you basically use the digital pins. We can use any of those digital pins. Yeah, any of the digital pins. For example, if I were to connect to pin seven, then you can. Oh, but for the uh, the task that I'm giving, right? Like for now, since we're waiting for some of them, try to use the pin eight, and then try to tap the circuit from here. Try to make another circuit here, without touching these two pins. Okay. So just a quick one, right? Just to run through this quickly. Integer red LED is where you put the pin, pins in. Let's say if you have buzzes coming in, all the pins and all, you declare it first before even you put your white setup. Under the white setup, uh, you have to set it up first. So you declare the pin to be an output pin, whether you want it to be output pin, whether you want to read something from the uh, sensor itself. So if it's a sensor pin, usually it will become uh, input. If it's a LED buzzer, all those will be output. Under the white loop, we have digital write. Uh, we are writing this one to the red LED. And then we wait for five, uh, five seconds. 5,000 means five seconds. Basically, this is 5,000 milliseconds, which is about one, five seconds. You wait for that time. I mean, you wait for that long. And after that, you turn it off. And then you wait for another five minutes, uh, another five seconds. Okay. So what are analog pins? All right. Uh, I will come to this point. I mean, uh, this, this part later when we do more examples. Okay. So the next part uh, is, is traffic light project that we're going to do now. We have pin eight, we have pin seven, pin six. So can we use these three pins in order for us to make a traffic light and let's try to code it first. So uh, how does it work? Read light. For five, uh, for example, for example, five seconds, and then from red light it should be jumping to green, and then yellow, and then red. Red, green, yellow, red. Red, green, yellow, red. How do we code that? How do we do that? All right. 
So those who know how to program, those who know about this bot, you guys can start. You all can go ahead first. Those who don't have any idea, uh, I'm going to show you one by one here. First thing first, and before I continue, may I know if everybody is on the same boat? Are you guys able to follow? Okay. Yes, sir, yes. Great. Okay, great, yeah. So let's do a, let's, let's continue, right? We will get another LED. We'll put it this side by side, right? And then for this, change the color to yellow. Okay, so now we have a yellow LED. The same connection, resistor, but instead of connecting like this, we can make a parallel connection. And let me show you how it's connected. So the, if you look at this pin here, this, if you look at this row here, those pins are actually connected uh, horizontally. If I were to tap here, it's going to be five volt. If I would, I mean, sorry, if I were to tap here, it's going to be ground. If I tap here, it's going to be ground. If I tap here, it's going to be ground. So what I'm going to do is to delete this and I'm going to tap the ground from this pin directly, put it to this black line here. And instead of having the resistor like uh, horizontally, I'm going to rotate and I'm going to connect it this way. If we were to have the circuit like this, do you think it will work? Well, will this circuit work? Yes or no? Answers in the chat box also. Right, yes. So if I were to click on start simulation, it will still work. Why? From pin A, it's going to A0. From A dot, it's going to a resistor. From resistor, it's going all the way to ground. And this pin is connected, right? And the same thing that we're gonna do for other LEDs. Just resistor, connect this to pin seven. Right? yellow then yellow one more here this is for green we'll have another resistor that's it right when we're doing projects and stuff we will make sure uh, it's nice looking uh just like this for this oh yeah so yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, so we have red, yellow, and green. Uh, sir? Yeah. Sir, here uh, we can say that all the bulbs are connected in uh, series, right? Okay, so for ground, they are connected in parallel for the rest, yes, series. This is independent, like from eight, it's good, yeah. But these pins are all parallel. The ground pins over here are parallel. Okay, so the ground connection is parallel and the uh, yeah, connection to uh, the anode is uh, in series. Correct. The, okay. And uh, the respective resistance of the all three bulbs are connected in uh, parallel. Uh, to the bulbs, uh, uh, to the bulbs, or uh, or or are all resistors uh, parallel to each other? Uh, I think I may I may not be able to convey my question properly here. Yeah, I got a question here. So all the circuits are connected in series. Only this pin is in parallel. We mean to say we are breaking the uh, ground pins to have to, for, so that we can have more ground pins here. But other than that, all the three circuits are independent. They don't have any parallel connection here. Okay, okay. They are they are they are all independent. Okay. Yeah, they're all independent. Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you. So how do we change the color of wires? Oh, you can click here and then click here on top. Okay, right. okay. Sure. Okay. Sir? Yeah. So you said that all the three circuits are independent, but uh, suppose if we take current from uh, red wire, then 
uh, it will go to, through the red bulb and then come to the resistor and yeah. here at the resistor it is horizontal the plate is horizontal so the current might distribute and go to the resistor corresponding to the yellow bulb yeah, but but these are ground things right so this this is where you have zero but there is no power going in why because like so this this pins are independent pin a is independent let's say if i were to connect maybe from here and if i were to give a connection directly here then i would say it's a it's a parallel circuit because the power from a it's going to this pin also this pin right yeah. now all the pins are connected separately so but the uh, means why the current cannot go from the resistor of red bulb to the resistor of yellow bulb because uh, the plate from downward is connected horizontally yeah, yeah that's only for the ground so the excuse ground, me sir yeah so if please possible uh, can you show us uh, the circuit diagram it's actually hard to visualize therefore uh, you mean the circuit diagram for this uh, yes sir uh, if it's possible uh, i doubt whether we will be able to change it to a circuit diagram but but I mean, this should be easy, right? But compared to the circuit diagram, this should be much easier. So, okay, like all these pins, okay, if I, I'll keep it simple then. If we were to, it is the same, right? It is the same of connecting this pin directly to ground. This to ground, this to ground. It's actually the same. We're not making much difference over there. Okay. Right? It's actually okay. the same. But why are we uh, trying to break the points? Because we don't have many ground points on the uh, on the Arduino board. So that's why we are trying to kind of break the uh, board so that we'll have more pins, more ground pins. Yeah, All right. Okay, yes, cool. I understood, sir. Yeah, so all three are independent. I guess I answered that question. Uh, mm -hmm. And move forward. Again, it's going to be the same thing. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And you will be able to connect that. Pin 7, pin 6. Pin 7, pin 6. And do not uh, forget to change the variable name here. Green. The same thing over here. I have a quick question. In the setup, instead of writing the red, red, yellow, or the green, we can just input the numbers of the pin, right? Eight, seven, and six. Yeah. But just to show more obviously, uh, I'm going to the colors. So some people, I think, might not be able to understand. Maybe it's not that way. And uh, compared to Python, this is not a pre sensitive language. So you guys can actually have. Uh, In between some stuff. So if you were to look at how I'm doing it, I'm just copy pasting it. I'm not uh, doing any stuff here. I'm just copy pasting it. Uh, sir, uh, just another question regarding the resistor. Uh, the position of resistor here, we have connected it to uh considering the first register corresponding to the red bulb uh, we have connected it to b12 position the cathode part the the positive terminal part right mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it doesn't matter if we connect it to b11 or b10 position it will work the same right yeah it will work the same okay okay sir. but if you were to move it down see the other pin is actually not going to ground it's actually going to this plus and you don't have any any uh power pin going in the plus so Yes, sir. Just because you do it, I mean, you do it correctly. And what is the significance of this plus and minus? Oh, the plus and minus is just for you to have more pins coming up. Okay. Okay, sir. Because if you look at a bot, you only have one five volts here. So if you need more five volts, then this is where you break it. You just connect this pin to five volts, and then you can have multi, uh, you can have a lot of five volts. Okay, yes. Okay. Sir, I have one doubt that yeah. you have added, I think, extra delays because just when red LED will be turned off, at that time only yellow should be turned on. There is no delay between turning off of red light and turning on of yellow light. Like okay. red so light. 
switches to yellow if you would look at that code basically you try to understand this so it will work it will turn up for uh, it will turn on the red led will turn on after one second it will turn off after one second led yellow led will turn on after one second a yellow led will turn off after one second green led will turn on after after that then again the green will uh, turn off and then this goes on loop so right after green you should be able to see your red led lighting up if you were to start the simulation it should be working now let's see if it works red led green led and uh right but this isn't the case right from red how does it do the yellow what can we do for that I mean, in real case, in real situations, from wait, it will it will be directly going to green. You don't okay. remove that digital right uh, red light low portion from everywhere. Okay, so can I have more answers in the chat box? Let me see who is able to. Or you can put the delay delay to one. Uh no, or that the would low. Meaning the delay wouldn't solve. Okay, so the question is, see now it's working from like it's the 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 rate is turning on first followed by the yellow and then followed by the green. But in the real situation, it doesn't work like that. From red, it will be directly going to green. How do we, how can we solve this issue? Then remove the delay 1000 after like digital right after every. Or put low for delay at one millisecond. Or delay for low at one millisecond. Because and if you remove that 3, low, then it won't one. turn off. Okay, but there is an easy way to do this. So, so we, we can rearrange the remove, remove the three second, two second, one second. No, so I got one answer in the chat box and it's correct. So maybe you guys can answer the chat box to see what would be the best answer. So can't we rearrange the uh, code? Yeah, rearranging the code would help you. All right, that's it. We just need to rearrange the code. That's all. Yes, sir. All right, it is that easy. Okay, if you were to remove the uh, the delay here, let's see how it works. For example, this delay, the first two delays, right? You will not be able to see the light turning on at all. The reason is because the moment it turns on, you're turning it off, right? So that's that's why we need to have the delay in the way. So if we keep the delay on after the high, but just remove it after the low, then I, think it might work. Yeah, I mean, it will also work, but it is that uh, when when it, it turns off, it will directly turn the other LED on. For example, the rate, when it off itself, it will go directly to the uh, yellow. I mean, if that's what you guys want. So we, now, as long as you can code, you'll be do, it'll be able to do a lot of things on, on Arduino. Okay, any questions on this before we go to the next part? All right, uh, can I know uh, what time is the, what, whether there's any break in between and what time are we planning to end the session? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, definitely can. Uh, for question, do, to answer Yash, for the question, yes. So while waiting for the, to answer so we'll go to the next part of the project uh if you don't get if you have if you guys don't have any questions on this we will we'll see how it works for a motor if you were to turn on a motor how does it work right so uh yeah all good for this part can we go to the next part okay let's quickly go on to a new uh open up a new file Right, so click on things like that. That's the first project. Let's go to a new project. Click on new circuit. I think we should go for like a four minutes break or five minutes break, and then we come back. We work on this. All right, yeah, five minutes break. Then we'll continue. Oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, there is another workshop from nine uh, fifteen. So I think you can just like give them idea uh, an idea about what are the different things we can do with it, and not worry too much about the code. Okay. Like, Sure. Like there's, uh, like you, have, you you can give them five minute break and then in half an hour or twenty five minutes whatever you 
think you okay. want to go ahead. Sure. So we have another five. Uh, so nine nine fifteen. I have to pass pass it back to the floor. Nine fifteen. Uh, yeah, nine fifteen. There is another workshop, but like it can be, it is like little bit flexible. It we can do it from nine twenty twenty five. That. Okay. Sure. Sure. I understand. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, can you please show the previous code uh, of the previous project code as uh, I'm not able to do it. Uh, my my project code is not working. Okay, sir. Sure. I'll show you the code then. Okay, thank you, Right, so if everybody is back, then y'all can just uh, let me know in the chat box. We'll go to the next project. Okay, cool. So let's work on another project here. And this time around, we are going to, yeah, sure. Uh, um, now we are going to kind of uh, work on a motto, right? To control how, how can we control a motto? So this is the basics that we can, uh, you guys have to learn in order if you want to do a 2WD vehicle, 4WD vehicle and stuff, then this is where you kind of start. I'm going to go very slow again on that, uh, but just to give you all a rough idea, uh, because I, I think I only have about 30, 40 minutes left. So the resistor LED is basically to see how it works. Uh, I mean, how, how it, we can light it up, we can use it for that. Potentiometer is where you can control the brightness of LED. If you wish to control the brightness of LED, the potentiometer is a correct component to work. Uh, push button, if you press, if you press something, then you want it to work. Um, 
nine volt battery, coin cell battery, batteries. We have a micro bit, uh, and it's another interesting microcontroller that we have, uh, have been working on quite quite some time, and it's very interesting to use that also. Uh, the good thing about this, we have a radio uh, radio we call uh, RF communication. So if you have two micro bits, you will be easily able to control uh, the two micro bits. Unlike Arduino, Arduino you have to use the Bluetooth and stuff. Other than that, the motto here, all right? We are going to use this motto. Uh, I'm not sure if you have seen it before, but we are going to use that. And then we have the uh, transistor RGB LED where you can put uh, red, green, blue, all in one LED. Uh, diode, and then we have a uh, photoresistor diode, which basically allows one way current. Uh, ultrasonic sensor where you can have uh, four motors coming in. You can do a range test also over here. PIR basically to um, what we call sense motion. PISO is for you to hear some sound and then temperature sensor, All right? So these are the things that we uh, have in our Arduino, uh, what we call a Tinkercad platform here. Oh, uh, we definitely can use the normal DC motors, but we are going to use this kind of motors to see how we can move forward, how we can move backward, how we want to turn left. If, let's say we have four motors coming in, how do we turn left, how do we turn right? All right, so the uh, normal DC, it's actually a normal DC here. If you were to take out this part, and it's basically this one, which is actually going in, we have some gears working inside. Right. Uh, I've been able to answer your question. This should be. Uh, 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 piezo should be a buzzer, but I'll check on that again. It should be a buzzer uh, for us to hear different sound, uh, different frequency. Okay, so let's quickly start this. Uh, we are going to get the small breadboard and we are going to get a motor controller L298B. This is a cage bridge motor driver. And I'm going to tell what are the things that we have here, right? If you were to zoom in, if you were to look on the first pin, it says enable, right? L293D, get it on the breadboard and let's look on the pins that we have on the board from the IC itself and the multiplexer itself. The first one is enable pin, enable one, two. The second one is, if the second pin that we have is input one, output one. Input one, output one, ground, ground, output two, input two, power two. Clear? So any questions on this pin here? Now, very easily, this, uh, this, this power pin should be going to plus, right? I mean, uh, let's make a few connections, the basic connections first. Power pin, we always know that this should be connected to uh, 5 volt here. This pins are ground. So where do we connect? Let's connect to this, this two pins here. And I wanted to change it to black so that it will be more obvious. Okay. Maybe you guys can take a look first on how I connect, and then once you have, if you have any questions, then you all can, uh, you know, uh, ask me up once I complete. We have output two, we have input two, we have input one, input output one, and then over here we have the enable pin. And another thing that we're going to do here is to get an Arduino board. Which is a board. Okay. Yeah, so we can have it here. Five volt to five volt first. So basically, I'm connecting the weight pin. And then the ground should be connected to ground. Uh, sir, how do we make the wires curve uh, uh, while performing the experiment? Oh, you click, and then when you when you reach the point, you just click again. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, just click. Okay, why do we connect both to ground? Because this pins should be going to ground. Like if you look, if you were to look at the pin itself, they are going, they are ground pins.
And the reason that we use this L293B, it's a motor driver. Uh, yeah, as as uh, Adit said, the function of this motor driver itself is to give out enough currents for the motor to speed or the motors to work. All right. Is everybody able to follow? Yes, sir. Okay. So the Arduino, how did you um, place it? Like, is there any significance as to how you placed the placed it? No, you can just place it anywhere. Okay. Okay. Yeah, for this this project. And then let's uh, let's connect the first pin, which says enable one. Now, uh, this for for us to enable this multiplexer itself or the IC itself, we have to connect this to a digital pin. And we have to declare it uh, that we're turning it on, right? So this will be our output pin that we need to declare. Um, huh? That's to make it, yeah. Yes. So when you connect to the power and when you connect to a digital pin, uh, the output one? Yeah, that's what you're going to do. So I didn't get means, uh, which is supplying the power, the power pin or the output pin? You mean to which pin? This two the output pins, is it? No, sir, uh, this 9, 10, uh, where you connected now, uh, digital PWN is written on the Arduino. Uh -huh. What is this pin doing? 10 pin. So oh, it will be giving out a digital signal. Okay. Again, one means high, uh, zero means low, which means if you, if you, will, if you were to plug in a, 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 what we call power pins, right, to the motor, it could be moving forward. If you were to reverse, then you will reverse. For mm -hmm. example, high on the first pin, low on the second pin will be moving forward. Low on the first pin, high on the second pin will be moving backward. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what is the function of enable part in uh, L2, L293? To enable this, uh, what we call uh, IC itself, just to make sure it works. Okay, so we have to connect it to the D10 terminal, right? Yeah, D10 terminal. And then for the next pin, which is the input pin, we are going to connect this to um, pin, which pin shall we connect? Pin seven, six, right? Seven and six. So seven for this pin. This is the input pin. Then the output pin, let me just use another color, should be going to the motor. It should be going to the motor. How do I can see how to draw it nicely? Yeah. I'm just making the call so that it will be uh, like it will be more obvious when you are looking at it. But it's okay if you guys don't want that. You can just simply directly connect if you know what you're doing. And over here we have two. Uh, but I mean, ports also, one is the input and one is output. So the input pin will also be connected to pin six, right? So I'll make the connection. This part might look very challenging, but uh, we'll give it a try. Yeah, only this means, so no worries at all. And then the output goes to, the other pin that we have on the motor, this pin, right? That's it. If it's very confusing, I can change the colors for you. Uh, so another question is that uh, we are connecting the output one pin uh, to the um, uh, seven term, D7 terminal, right? Output, uh, yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, so how 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 uh, how do we come to know that uh, from uh, which terminal we have to connect to the output and which terminal we have to connect to the input pin? Okay, if you were to zoom in, you yes. can actually see enable input, output, ground, and all right. So the ground. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I I understood that part, but uh, in for the case of input and output terminal, how do we know that uh, to which uh, D terminal we have to connect them? You mean D six D five is it? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes. Sir. Again, you can connect to any of these pins and you can code it. Depends on you. Okay, okay. So, so uh, in the final output, it will depend on how do we code it actually. Yeah, exactly. Okay, sir. So. 
All right. So this is a connection basically. And one thing that they are also going to do, we would look at this power one. We are also going to tap this power, put it to uh, put it to five volt. That will be the last thing that we need to do. Power one and then the other pins. Let's say if you have two motors, then you will connect it on the other side, on, on, over this side. Again, we have an evil pin, input three, input output three, ground ground, output four, output uh, input four. So that's for another motor to be able to connect. We can use the left side and also the right side. Since we only have one motor, this is how we're going to connect. All right. So can I have uh, some feedback in the uh, chat box, whether it's too much to absorb, whether it's easy, whether you guys are able to follow and stuff. So could you repeat the uh, recent instructions, what you just told right now? A, which one? So, okay. uh, so if you were to have two motors, for example, right? If you want to make a two WD, you, you can use the part over here. Like, can you see the input, input and output here? Input four, output four, then you can use these pins. And also the pin, the three, uh, the pin three and pin four, which is the input three, output three, input four, and output four. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, um, what are the uh, differences between the power and digital pins? Okay, good question. Power is basically giving you a constant power. Digital pins where you are able to control the power. So, but in the earlier experiment using in the LED bulb, we didn't use the power pins to light the LED bulb. Then how come we light it without because, any power? Yeah, because we control. That's why you you will have the control. If you want to control the power. Then you connect it to a digital pin. If you want so, a constant power, you connect to a constant power here, five volt. So are all digital pins uh, uh, are of are of same voltage? Yeah, it will be giving you a same voltage. Okay, sir. So can you please yeah. tell that what was the source of power in the LED experiment? Okay, so if you want a constant output, all right. If you want a five volt throughout your experiment, you put Five, you connect to five volt. You connect the direct LED directly to five volt. But in the case if you want to control the power, then you put it to be token. Whether if it's five volt, and sometimes you want it to be zero volt, right? Where you turn it off, basically it drops to zero volt. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can we connect the enable bit to five volts? Yeah, but before that, for the traction red wires and black wires, we are uh, I've, I'm using the wire, the colors, different colors, just to make it more obvious. That's all. Um. Yeah, they don't have any significant uh, we call reason behind it. Sir, can you explain the working of the motor? Like, why do we need two outputs, two inputs, and two outputs? Okay, cool. Yeah, so I will, uh, before I explain that, I think it would be good to have the code ready and then we test it out, then we'll be able to understand easily. All right. Uh, the red and black wires. Uh, so maybe Ankush, you might want to unmute yourself and tell us what which which pin is that. I wanted to ask that uh, the blue and green wires are connected to digital pins, so they are helping to move the motor. But what the black and red wires are doing, I'm not able to understand. Uh, again, which black wire, which red wire here? Yeah. All, all. Oh. Okay, the red wires is just a different color that they are uh, using on the circuit. You can use any color you want. You can change it to, you know, all white, it will still work. But the most important thing, uh, just to show how the power actually flows. So the five and the ground, this is where they are giving constant power of five volt and constant power of ground, meaning this is uh, zero volt, zero volt and five volt. And then from here, they are tapping into a multiple channel here. And why do we need to tap? Because the, the multiplexer for it to operate, it needs a power pin, it also needs a ground pin to be connected. And why do we need, why can't we connect the motor directly to our Arduino? Arduino can only supply about one amp at most because your computer, when you're connected, you wouldn't be able to supply a lot of current. But for the motors to spin at a very high speed, it needs a better current. And for that, for the better current, you can you, you use a motor controller. All right. So they're supplying to the uh, that L two and three D power to L two and three D. 
power to L two and L. They are like they are supplying power to L two and three D to work to to make it work. Correct. Yes. So that and, okay, we don't have this. If we don't have this guy, it's going to be very tough to control the motor because we will not be able to power up the motor itself. And uh, the red wire and on the top, what it what it is doing? Okay, this is a power pin. Again, this if you if you were to look at this pin, it's a power pin, right? So we it it should be connected. All the pins should be connected for to where it should be. For example, this is a power pin, so you connect it to five volt. If it's a ground pin, you connect to ground. So two okay. ground and two power pins. Again, two ground and two power pins are there. They have more actually. If you were to look at this pin, then these are also ground. But the reason that we don't connect because we are not having another circuit there, All right? Okay, I think I'm I'm confusing this part. So the left part is to control the motor that you're connecting to a left circuit. Let's say you have. So considering this is on the left, considering this part is on the right, then this if you have another motor, you can connect from here. All right, maybe I can show you quickly. If I were to have another motor, this is how I connect. All right, just to show quickly. All right, so a pin directly from here. This is output pin, right? On yeah, this is the input pin. Sorry, it should be output pin. Then another output should be also coming in from another output, which is this pin. So it will be here. Then the input pin to connect to Arduino. Then this is an Evo pin. You also need to connect to a. You need to connect to any of these pins. You will have two motors working. Otherwise, you only have one motor working. Right. So that's why since you are only. So what is the need of two outputs in the motor? Sorry, what's that again? Two outputs. Yes, sir. Means how come? Means why only one input and one output? Okay, um, input is where you are getting the signal from the uh, Arduino. The signal from the Arduino. Output is where you are providing the signal to your motor. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Do we do we need two motors for a two wheel drive system or a four wheel drive system? It depends. It depends on how you want it to control. How you want it to be controlled. So let's say you have a uh, one, like if one motor driver, which is one L two nine three D, you can show uh, have two wheels. Connected parallelly. You get what I mean. So the two wheels, yeah, basically how two two WD and four WD works. If you want a four WD, all four independent uh, motors, then you should have two L two nine PD. If you want only two WD, then you should can only have one. One is to move left and right, move forward also possible. So why there are two ground pins and two power pins on on one only one? Two power pins and two. You mean this pin here? Uh, yeah. Okay, they are required by the multiplexer. For for the multiplexer to work, we should uh, be providing the ground pins over here. Right. No, on, why why two? Because both also goes to ground, right? I'm not sure if you connect one. Uh, I'm not sure if this is connected inside, but yeah, uh, it's always more. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it there should be a connection inside, but but I mean, considering the point that if there is no connection inside, then then you can do it that way. Okay, so let's go to the code quickly. All right, uh, it's taking some yeah. It, Okay, we'll quickly start the code. Are we ready to code? Yes, no. Yes, in the chat box. If you guys are not ready, then okay, cool. Now the first thing that we do. Oh, uh, Drew, any any question that you have? Anything I can help you with? Uh, no, sir. Actually, I was connecting the wires. So uh... okay. Sure. Oh, okay. So I, I, I can I can do that later. I can. Okay. So the 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 three uh pins that we are looking at is this pin ten, pin seven, and pin six. They are the very important pins, right, for us to operate the motor. Pin ten is an enable pin. So integer enable a equals to pin ten. 
all right and then we can call uh integer moto a uh what do you want to call it as okay input one input two easier input one is pin seven input two is and two is pin six again the same thing white it up i guess it shouldn't be a problem now again all everything should be output because we are giving out uh, powers so pin mode a output it goes so what is ENA? pin ene is it what was the question again ena so for the case of input one and input two shouldn't we write uh, input here uh okay so yeah, this is where you have to understand. Input is for this guy, right? For the multiplexer, it's actually getting the instruction from the Arduino board. Now you're actually coding the Arduino board itself. Uh, it? so, sorry, sir. You are coding, you are sending the commands, this program to the Arduino board. Yes, sir. But the input here, the, you mean the input here, right? Because why do we have an input, but then why do, do we have an output there? And that means uh, the L two nine three IC is already receiving the input from the uh, uh, Arduino. Arduino, yes, but but this output is for us to provide the power outside. Of, I mean, out of the Arduino board itself. Uh, to the motor, right? No, to the multiplexer. It doesn't go to the motor directly. The multiplexer, multiplexer input will receive it. Multiplexer output will give it to the motor. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, so we have pin mode enable a output input uh, integer one output integer two output all right so that part is done and then the next thing is void loop right void loop uh then we will have this yeah sure so i'll try to uh quickly show uh uh example of the time permits now two things that we can do is one is to analog write even though if it's a digital pin you can actually do it but in the case if you don't want then we, keep, we will keep it simple a digital write and a high always it is always high meaning to say it's always on enable pin always on next thing digital write we want the input to be also high When input one is high, the other input must be always low if you want it to move forward or move backward. One should be high, one should be always low. If you put both low, it will stop. If you put both high, it will also stop. Nothing will work. Right. 5,000 or maybe 2,000. And then after that, what we're going to do, we go, right? See if this works. Feature one. Uh, integer one will be low this time, and then right two will be high. All right. At first it was high low, now it's low high. Another DB two thousand. Then we try to complete the code. Okay, let's complete the code. That's it. So let's see if this works. Now, how many of you think this would work? Yes, sir. How many Can you think? please tell again why output is being used in an input one and input two in void setup? Okay, this is just name, right? You can put it as any variable, output one, any variable. You can even put your, like, any name. So how it is taking the in, uh, output, uh, like those two pins? Uh, input one and input two that I am not able to understand. Which, which one? Which one are not able to understand? Uh, for different output, like pin mode output, uh, input one output. So how it is taking the output? Okay, that's a good question. The output here is basically the power out of the Arduino board. It's not the power, right? It's not the power out of the, uh, the what we call the multiplexer. Now the power out of the Arduino is actually going to the multiplexer. 
that that's why it's receiving see it's going to the input right it's going to the input input means so basically the uh, multiplexer is receiving the command from the arduino and this is actually sending this is receiving this is out it's giving out this is giving, taking in and once the multiplexer gets a data a signal it will then send it out to the motor which will then be powered on so I understand the question here. This is input because it's getting the data from Arduino, but now we are coding it for Arduino itself. We're not coding for this L293 directly. We are programming the uh, the bot, the direct bot itself. And if you were to click on start simulation, look, minus 143, and then after two seconds, 143, minus 143, after that 143, what happens here? Basically, it's moving in an uh, opposite direction, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. Right. So now, uh, let me ask you a question. If we have two motors connected side by side, if I want to turn left, right, considering this as motor one, this motor here, and this is the chat box, right? And this is the chat box. We have this motor, motor one, connected to this is a motor one. We have another motor, motor two. If I want to turn right, which motor should move forward? So if I want to turn right, motor one should move forward, right? If I want to turn left, motor two move forward. So that's a simple thing that we, that we can actually do. So with two motors, we'll be able to turn left, turn right, move back, move forward and stop. Sir, instead of just moving forward, can we not control like one should move faster? Like if we are turning right, the left motor should move faster than the right one. Okay. Right, so that is also possible where the ENE comes in, right? The ENE thing comes in. Uh, and, sir? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, we, we are defining a delay of uh, two seconds here. So wouldn't it be more efficient if we write a code such that there is no delay uh, then, uh, um, uh, I mean, um, it is uh, the delay is between the uh, changing of current, right? We are, uh, we are using alternating current here. No, all those are DC current. Oh, DC current. Um, yeah, all those are DC. But, sir, but sir, in, uh, one, uh, uh, in one of the cases, input one is at the high voltage and input one is the low voltage. Uh, so it must be the case for uh, alternating current, right? Because uh, there we see that uh, uh, the voltage drops and then voltage rises again. Uh, good question, but before that, let me answer this question first. Uh, how do we control the speed of rotation? Is basically to change it to analog read, right? Let's uh, if we were to change this to analog read, analog, uh, analog right, sorry, analog right and 255, we will be able to control the speed of the motor itself, right? We can reduce this. So now it's at 143. If I were to stop, if I were to turn this to 125, maybe half of it, or maybe 100, all right? I should be able to see running at half speed, 68, 70. That's how we control the speed of rotation. Uh, I guess I answered the question, uh, Raman. Uh, for the question that whether we will be able to, what was the question again? Sorry. Uh, uh, it was about the, the alternating current oh, since. Alternating current. No, uh, the, the, it's a DC motor by itself. So we are uh, powering. So if you want to reverse the motion, then you just change the high low. Uh, what we are trying to do is basically to leave a five volt on negative, but on, on positive, it, it goes on the other way around. So when you put, uh, when you have a series signal, if you are giving uh, plus to plus, minus to minus, it will be moving forward. If you put plus to minus, minus to plus, it will be moving backward. Uh, okay, sir. Oh. So, but uh, uh, about, about this input part, uh, I, I'm getting confused that in one of the cases we are defining it to be at high voltage, and uh, and in one and uh, after the delay case we are defining it to be low voltage. So when I when I saw that, I immediately think of the alternating current case because um, uh, that's the only case uh, where uh, the voltage changes to high to low. Then again, yeah, the concept. Uh, yes, you can think of it like that. But but uh, since you're using a DC current here, then yeah, like by, by name itself, we should be able to know that it's a DC uh, motor, right? Okay, so for the for the question that how do we uh, change the speed and all control the speed, analog right, the enable pin is basically for you to uh, turn it on and also to control the speed. 
So over here, if you were to uh, change it to 255, and why 255? Because two to the power of uh, 10, you know, uh, so the maximum bit, yeah. So that will give you about 255, right? So that's the maximum uh, that you can actually go. And if you were to turn it on at 255, analog to read, it should be analog to write, sorry. It should be giving us about 143 RPM. And if you were to change this, anything lesser, you can keep it to 100, you can put it to 125, any values below, any any values, maybe half of it, then it should be running at about 50, 57, 56 RPM. Right? So so if we put one. Again, what is it? So what if we put one? Because that corresponds to high. So if there will be a confusion. Okay, so that is something that you can try also. Let's try to change it to one and see whether it works. Yeah, it works. I mean, it's not able to turn if you can see, uh, because for it to turn. Oh, in digital case, in digital case, yeah, it will definitely. So, in digital case, it will be a full power equivalent to equivalent to two five five. All right, equivalent to two five five. Should be running at one four three. Well, yes, sir. Okay, good. So and now uh, I think I'll uh, kind of wrap it up here. What other things we can do? We can simulate a lot of things on on uh, what we call on a uh, figure cat. I'm also going to show how it actually can work for this uh, part. All right, so if you were to look at this circuit itself, we have uh, four motors here connected to two different, what we call uh, uh, two different ICs, and we have an ultrasonic sensor here. And if you were to look at a code, it's not too bad. I mean, not too complex, something we, which we still can understand. For the beginners, for the first time while looking at a code, yeah, I understand your feelings here. Uh, but if you were to start simulation, see how it works. All right. Um, okay, right now it's all at uh, zero RPM. If you, if I were to bring it, okay, there is something wrong with the circuit itself, right? Voltage is too much on the circuits. So I'll check another connection. Hang on, let's check another circuit. Yeah, so this is where we basically test our circuits and stuff. Uh, those who need the code for this, I'm sending in the chat box. Yeah, send in the chat box. Let me see if I have any other project to show you guys. Maybe this. See. Yeah, it works. So if we were to look at the uh, RPM, it's about 209. If I were to move it closer, move the point closer, then it's running about uh, 60, 70, right? It's actually basic, uh, it's actually detecting an obstacle, uh, obstacle in front. If I were to move the, move the obstacle further away, then it's running about 209. Right, so that's a basic example on what are the things that you can actually do on the cat platform. With that being said, uh, I think I'll stop it here for questions and answers. Uh, yeah, so, thank you, Lavnishan. So, uh, and everyone also, thank you for joining. And we'll have another workshop in some time. Take a break for five to ten minutes, and then come back to the same don't like it will be on the same link and uh, once again very much thank you lovely yeah okay sure um uh, would it be possible for us to take a picture of the of the session or yeah yeah that would be great so yeah. everyone everyone who is able to uh, start their cameras please start it and uh, you can stop sharing so that yeah. would be look Thank you.
Yeah, so is there someone? Yes. No? Yeah, I'm thinking. Right. Okay. Just a second. Is it done? Yeah, I guess it should be done by now. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, I know I'm something about. I will be sending the code for the whole robot. Now, in the chat box, so you guys just have to take a look on that. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy, and it would be good to see some uh, feedback in the chat box as well. Yes, sir, the session was very nice. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. And yeah, um, I'm not able to send the code in the chat box uh, just because it's not allowing me to copy and paste the whole code, but I'm sending it in the PC and here is a link. All right, thank you everyone. Bye-bye.